Subjectivity in cinema has become a standard in the conventions of modern filmmaking, with majority of modern films striving to allow the viewer to see the world from the character's point of view. Yet, only few filmmakers have managed to use subjectivity in the medium of cinema as potently as Krzysztof Kieślowski. In this video essay, we will explore how Krzysztof Kieślowski employs cinematography, sound, and the edit techniques of film form to evoke character subjectivity in his films, which are defined as placing the viewer into the perspective of the characters in the film, allowing them to experience what the character experiences and feels, further evoking empathy. Living in Poland during his years of communism, a Kieslowski early in his career in film started out as a documentary filmmaker. His primary focus was on human subjects. As seen in one of his first few documentaries, I Was a Soldier, where he tells the story of seven men who had experienced war. Kieslowski eventually moved his focus to making fictional features. It was then he became part of the Cinema of Moral Anxiety, a loose film movement that criticized the corruption of the communist system in Poland. But even then, while Kieslowski's early films had heavy political content, they remained fixated on exploring and understanding the human condition and allowing the viewer to see the world from the character's perspective. This can be most prominently seen in Camera Buff, one of Kieslowski's notable early features when he was still part of the cinema of moral anxiety. While the film made several statements regarding the political corruption in Poland, Camera Buff still focuses on the main lead. In the film, Kieslowski adopts a documentary aesthetic of freeform handheld camera movements. However, this aesthetic does not only serve to create visual interest, but it also reflects the perspective of the eponymous camera buff Philip, the protagonist of the film who begins to get obsessed making films. We see in the few first-person perspective shots of Philip looking through his camera as he shoots. The camera style that Philip cruises is handheld, reminiscent of the handheld camera aesthetic employed by the film. Through the visual similarities between the style of Philip's first-person perspective and the films, the viewer is visually placed within the perspective of Philip throughout the entire film, even when there are no first-person perspective used. In Kieslowski's later works, he began to embrace a more formalistic style, making use of refined cinematography and mise-en-scene to tell his story. Yet his stylistic use of the image remains faithful to evoking the perspective of the character to the viewer. In the first of Kieslowski's Three Colors trilogy, Blue, one of his later films, Kieslowski employs blue-colored filters and lighting consistently throughout the film to externally express the main character, Julie's, struggle with the memory of her family's death. Early in the film, Kieslowski makes association between the color blue with the death of her family. With the opening scene of the film, which shows a tragic car accident which we later find out claimed the lives of Julie's husband and child. The scene is dyed with diffuse blue hue that is far more distinct than the cooler hue that is applied in the majority of the later parts of the film. With the rest of the film being in a cooler colour temperature, reminiscent of the colour blue within the scene of the car accident, the viewer is actively reminded of the deaths of Julie's family, just like Julie herself, whom throughout the entire film struggles with the memory of her family's death. This can be most prominently seen in the scene where Julie sits resting on the chair outside and suddenly Through the use of the colour blue as a visual representation of Julie's state of mind, the viewer experiences Julie's internal anxieties and thus further allows the viewer to be placed within her subjective perspective. Blue is not the only film which Kieslowski has used this aesthetic style of distorting the colours with the image to mirror the state of mind of the protagonist. In one of Kieslowski's earlier films, a short film about killing, a film that centres around a young man, Jacek, who would eventually commit a cold and senseless murder of a taxi driver. Kieslowski uses coloured filters at first, seemingly reflects the dark narrative of the film, making Warsaw look cold, ugly and unfamiliar. However, near the end of the film, it is revealed that a drunken driver killed Jacek's baby sister. This key information, when brought to light, adds dimension to the use of filters within the film. The use of filters is not a superficial rendering of the dark narrative, but it also reflects Jacek's state of mind. In particular, it depicts Jacek's soft spot for little girls. This can be seen in an earlier scene when an artist draws a portrait of a little girl. The girl's appearance is clean and clear amidst the murky and cold colours caused by the use of filters. In other cases, Kieslowski will also make use of sound to 
create character subjectivity. This can be seen in a short film about love, a film about the voyeur, Tomek who falls in love with a woman, Magda. Here, Kaisalski evokes subjectivity through the precise use of both diegetic and non-diegetic sound. Diegetic being sound present within the world of the film, and non-diegetic sound being the opposite of the sound not being present within the film world. The first time we hear a score with motifs that will be repeated several times within the film plays, the first time we see Tomek observing Magda through his telescope. As the film progresses, information is revealed that Tomek spies on Magda because of love. The musical motif repeats whenever Tomek and later Magda acts upon their love, such as when Tomek successfully asks Magda out for a date. Or later, when Magda spies on Tomek. The non diegetic music reflects the state of mind of the characters, particularly their emotion of love. One of the scenes notable for showing this would be the scene where Magda receives a visit from her boyfriend as Tomek spies on her, unable to look upon the person he loves getting sexually intimate with somebody else. He turns away, and following Tomek, the non diegetic music ceases as well. The diegetic sound also reflects the character's state of mind. Throughout the film, it is clear that Tomek is obsessed with his love, going as far as to slip fake postal notes into the mailbox so he can meet her face to face. And to reflect this, in the scenes where Tomek spies on her, the diegetic sounds become drowned out by the musical score. And in the scenes where Tomek is not spying on Magda, the crisp, diegetic sounds of the everyday can be clearly heard. In blue, Kaislowski also uses a similar technique of using non-diegetic and diegetic sound to evoke the perspective of Julie. When Julie reads the musical score of her late husband, the very music plays within the scene. The non-diegetic music in this scene serves to express Julie's thoughts as she reads and imagines the music through the non-diegetic score. And as such, later, when Julie takes the score and tosses it into the garbage truck where it is destroyed, the music blends together and is soon overpowered by the diegetic sound of garbage truck machinery. With the physical score being destroyed, the music that the viewer hears dissipates as well. In the context of the film, with Julie wanting to rid herself of the memories of her husband, the music follows the state of mind of Julie, that upon the assurance of the destruction of her husband's score, her mind is lifted of the burden of memory of her family, and thus, the music stops as well. And finally, the last film form technique that I am covering, Howell Kaislowski makes use of editing to evoke a sense of character subjectivity in his films. In a short film about love, the final sequence of the film, Magda looks through the telescope that Tomek uses to spy on her. We see the exact same scene that we saw earlier in the film, of Magda weeping alone in the room. Except this time, there is an additional segment of Tomek comforting her, and it is shown in slow motion. The use of slow motion in the first person perspective of Magda looking through the telescope lengthens the scene, literally manifesting Magda's longing for Tomek, which we can clearly see from her desperate attempts to reconnect and find Tomek within the film. As the inner feelings of the character Magda is expressed visually through the slow motion effect, the viewer is able to understand and empathize with Magda to an even greater extent. Kisalsi makes use of editing to evoke character's subjectivity in blue as well using the fade-out editing effect instead of the slow motion. Usually, a fade-out in film grammar is commonly used to express a passing of time. Yet in blue, after the fade-out, the same scene continues to play. These fade-outs instead usually occurs within decisive turning points of Julie's life, such as a scene where Julie is offered information about the car accident that killed her family. She rejects the offer, and the fade-out occurs. No. The use of the fade makes the moment within the scene feel like a pause. The change in pacing within the scene externalizes the gravity of a life-changing decision that she has made to distance herself from the deaths of her family. And in another scene, when Julie is confronted by her friend regarding her emotional struggle, the fade-out occurs just before her reply, 
creating a moment of pause within the scene. And after the fade, Julie makes the decision to lie to her friend. In this scene, the fade out reflects her process of thought on whether to lie to a friend. With a career spanning over 20 years, Kaislowski has made films that are often described as intelligent, contemplative, and beautiful, especially in his later works, where he explored more metaphysical and philosophical themes in his films. Yet these traits by themselves are not what makes his film so masterful and enduring, but rather it's his ability to make the viewer care and empathize with his characters. They simply come alive. In blue, we feel Julie's need for distance and liberty. And in a short film about killing, despite the horrible acts Justin had committed, he evokes our sympathy with his execution being greatly affecting. The results are films that were not only intellectually stimulating, but also deeply moving.